Thanks for tuning in to the Illuminations Podcast. We love having you here. It is our mission to be a beacon of light on your journey towards conscious and mindful living. In our weekly episode, we bring you inspiring change makers in the field of spirituality, healing, personal growth, and wellness who share their insight and expertise so you can navigate your way to a happier, healthier, and more purposeful life. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Illuminations World Podcast. I'm your host, Nia. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, sound therapist, and yoga teacher here at Illuminations. And we are back with another episode, with another topic, and with another speaker. But this time, the speaker that we have on today is someone who has already been on the show and his name is Mr. Gregory Green. And the topic for today is something super exciting and I'm sure a lot of you will be super keen to hear all the insight about this. And it's all about how emotional intelligence can bring back the magic in your relationship. So before we get started, I just want to introduce Gregory one more time. So Gregory has been a life coach at Illuminations since 2016. He is a former special education science teacher and he's been doing that for 10 years. And he's also been a salesperson for 10 years. And finally, currently, he's also a manager for Conscious Solution Consultancy. So, Gregory, welcome to the show. It's such a pleasure to have you back. So very happy to be back. How's everybody doing? How you (laughs) living today? I love the energy. I honestly love the energy. And you're such a positive, optimistic person. And I I can't wait to have this conversation with you. Let us get into it. Uh, Looking forward to add tools to your toolkit personal and professional let's have some fun so we all know that as human beings one of the things that we need and want in our lives is uh, is a relationship right at, at some point so what can you tell us about emotional intelligence playing a key role in relationships very quickly, let's just sum it up. Uh, emotional intelligence was first brought about by Daniel Goldman in the 80s. Uh, strangely enough, uh, his parents taught at the university I went to, the University of Pacific, and I had had an opportunity to see Mr. Goldman uh, as they dedicated a library. And he spoke briefly on emotional intelligence and how performance, not only in personal life, but with professional, how it was not necessarily predicated on IQ, on Mm. the MBA or the magna cum laude Mm -hmm. or the degree, but that people are more receptive personally and in the office when they feel a connection from their manager where the manager actually goes that extra mile and takes a personal interest in the person's emotional state and their balance how are you feeling how's it going what can i do to make the day better if it's possible so this realm of emotional intelligence exploded back in the 80s and the 90s and now it's almost a buzzword in corporate and education where we want to raise our emotional intelligence but basically Emotional intelligence is that connection of social awareness, also having a responsibility of state management. And at the end of the day, what we like to believe at Conscious Solutions and Illuminations is after undertaking a session with us or a possible course in Emotional Intelligence Foundation, at the end of the course, I now have the ability so that I am running my emotions and my emotions aren't running me. Yeah. And it's incredible how effective it can be once you are aware of 
how to manage your emotions and interact with whether it's your family, whether it's your colleagues and how impactful that is at your workplace as well. Isn't that right? That's for sure. I mean, I think we can all, let's think of a manager that you felt connected with and he was a manager, but you almost considered him a friend. You considered him someone you could go to at any time. Yeah. And just tell him how you felt and why you were feeling that. Mm. Now let's flip the script, turn that coin over. Then there may be a manager or a person we're not going to identify that was somewhat unresponsive in relaying to your emotions. It could be a friend, could be a partner yeah. past, it could be a manager where you felt like they were so analytical mm. that you couldn't actually share what you were feeling whether it's you're having a good day you couldn't go to this person and express your emotion with them and have, you know you're smiling you're having a great day but they're so analytical they're so focused they're so not emotionally aware that they just say good yeah. okay let's get to work okay these are your assignments Okay, so you're feeling this way. This is what you want for dinner. There is no connection. Yeah. You're not connecting on a level of how you do it. Not only I care about you, but why I care about you. In relationships, humans are social creatures. Yeah. So in relationships, it's so important to not only give the I love you, I care for you, I appreciate you, but... I love dealing with men because we are conditioned to just do the basic. I love you. I care for you. You mean so much to me. But in emotional intelligence, we want to go to that level of I appreciate you. Yeah. I value you. You mean so much to me because of A, B, C. And make this a practice. Because to be quite honest... I never took emotional intelligence in school. That wasn't one of my tech. I had algebra, I had physics. <laughs> that wasn't taught to yeah. us. You know, I, I remember, you know, even when I did my master's, it wasn't an emotional intelligence book. So now we have an opportunity to learn about emotional intelligence, not only for ourselves, but to enrich others' lives yeah. and to get that big joy that big love that we all want from our children, that big love that we want where when you are in the office place, you are feeling like I'm not even a part of an employee. I'm a part of a team and we're all on a mission and we're in this mission together, hands held, committed. Yeah. And there's that emotional connection. There's that feeling of love. There's that feeling of care that when one of us is sick, I'm going to step in because I know this person would do it for me. That's an emotional connection. That's what emotional intelligence brings. Because you've touched, po you've touched uh, base on a lot of points here. Because what this connection brings, it's shining light on that individual's identity of who they are, what they bring to that system and the position that they have. And that's essentially what we all want to be seen, to be, to be acknowledged, to be heard. So when emotional intelligence is involved, you get that. Whereas when you, like you said, when there's a manager who does not acknowledge you, who, who does not have that emotional connection to you, you kind of lose your oh, identity, man. right? No, it's almost like, my self-esteem is dropping. Oh, no, yeah. I, I got to go to the work. And I go into work and I'm smiling. But my manager just literally brings me down. And you work for like eight to nine hours a day. How am I going to find my purpose? How am I going to find self-satisfaction? It's not about, as this new generation understands, we're not doing it for the money. Yeah. We're doing it to belong to something. We want to be valued for who we are and what we contribute. Especially in the workplace. Now, let's get into the relationship. Yeah. I want you to value me. I want you to love me for who I am. And I want you to explore and ask me questions that really touch my heart, 
touch my mind, touch my soul. Mm. And this can be learned through emotional intelligence. It has to be practiced Mm -hmm. the same way you practice riding that bike, the same way you are working out at that gym. We need to work out the emotional intelligence within yourself to build patterns. And once these patterns are built, let's turn these patterns into habits. And once these are habits, you're doing it every day, feeling like when I'm giving praise, I'm feeling good because I'm making the other person feel good. I love that. And I I love that we touched base on relationships. And you told me earlier, there are a couple of points. And I want to address these points. (laughs) And the first point being accountability. Tell me a little bit about that. All right. Uh, Being married 11 years, I have a mantra. And it's very simple. You can please use this. (laughs) I think I already know this. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. <laughs> Quite simple. Happy wife, happy life. Now, for her to be happy, I first have to put the arrow of accountability at myself. Okay. In what way? And what do you mean? What I mean is that, to be quite honest, if no one has told you, this person is not responsible for your happiness. Mm. Even though you have a wedding ring, even though you share a house, you share a home, you share meals, this person is not accountable for your happiness. So taking accountability for your... You have to make yourself happy. Mm. You have to take the arrow and point it to yourself and say, I need to make myself happy. I need to create an environment where I am happy. And now you can give feedback and let this person know these things, A, B, C, or D, make my day happier. But at the end of the day, we're not going to say it's because of you. No, Mm. it's not. We're mature. We're grown. You are responsible and you take accountability of your own emotional state. And then if once you've done that, then you can communicate that, you know, hon, Dinner was great, but I would really like it if you could A, B, C, D. That's feedback. There's no blame game in relationships. This person is not accountable for your emotional state. Before you came to them, you were hopefully in a good emotional state where you had yourself correct. You had your own emotional balance. You knew your boundaries. You knew what made you happy. You knew what made you sad. You had your motivations. And then you chose to add value to another person's life to create something higher, Mm. a greater love. But this idea of this person fulfills me or she makes my day because, you know, she adds to your day. You start off happy. She makes you happier. You have children. They make you the happiest. But you have to start off from baseline. That baseline is accountability. I'm responsible for my own happiness. I love that you said that. And I can also see why it's so hard for people to take accountability. Because once you realize the rain is uh, in your hands, then you're the one in charge, which means you need to do something about it. I got to put in that work. <laughs> nobody I, wants to no, put in that work. Nobody wants to put in the work. Uh, I want to read a book <laughs> and I want to have a theory. But when it comes down to actually doing it, that's where we're lacking uh, yeah. that I found. Yeah, I found people to come to me and in one session, they say, I want you to make my relationship better. Yeah. Okay, now I have a curious question. I'm so curious because I'm a curious person. How long has the relationship been unresourceful? We're not going to put labels like bad or good, but we're just going to say, how long has the relationship been unresourceful? Mm. Oh, this many months, this many years, mm-hmm. unresourceful. So logically speaking, In one session, you expect me to coach because I'm a coach. You already have the answers within you. My job is to add value and give you tools so that you can apply these tools every day Hmm. for the days, weeks, months, and years. 
and I look you in the eye and I ask you, are you ready to do the work? Yeah, that's that's a tough pill for a lot of people to swallow when it comes to that point when they realize, you know, I need to take control here. And I love what you touched base on a while ago about asking for what you want, because in order for someone in the relationship to ask for what they want for from their partner a b and c they would need to know what they need and perhaps it's it has to do with certain boundaries that they have so i want you to tell me a little bit about boundaries that people uh, can hold in a relationship how to set boundaries or how to identify what your boundaries are ideally um during the courting or during relationship, you're going to say, I prefer this or I don't prefer that. But when you are in the marriage state, boom, present state, now today, November the 3rd, 2022, if you haven't established emotional boundaries, here is your first clue. Honey, beloved, partner, wife, husband, this is what I feel comfortable with. And this is what I feel uncomfortable with. And I'm letting you know because I don't want to ever blame you or say you should know. How should I know? I'm not a mind reader. So by clearly communicating what is okay with me and what I feel may cross the line as far as my own judgment my own because we each have our own value systems Mm. and these systems are created through our environment family friends community organization absolutely but i need to tell my partner honey i'm comfortable with this and also honey i'm uncomfortable with this and then let them know you know i love you and i support you but it i feel a little bit uneasy about it And I want you to know because I don't want to go into this situation and then later on be passive aggressive. Oh, that is so true. And you know what, Gregory, something about setting emotional boundaries, I feel it takes vulnerability. And I feel being vulnerable can be very hard for a lot of people. So When it comes to being vulnerable and considering how difficult it can be, how can one person ask difficult questions, share difficult things, basically be vulnerable enough to hold that space and do that? Good question. Okay, so we're going to do a pace, pace, pace lead. Honey, uh, everything has been wonderful. First pace. Two. I'm looking forward to the A, B, C this weekend. Second pace, third pace. You know what? What really makes me excited is next pace. But I need to tell you something, and it's been kind of, I feel uneasy about it. Can I tell you? Can I share this with you? I need you to listen to me about this. Are you okay with that? Now, before you answer, honey, I just need you to listen. Because as a man, we always try to fix. But I just need you to listen. Because this is how I'm feeling. And then you do basically... You open yourself up because you've made that vow in a relationship or a marriage to expose the inner child, to peel back every layer from emotions to childhood traumas to problems at the job. But you've paced it in a way where you've given praise. You've told them how much they mean to you. You told them how you are my partner in life and how I feel I can come to you with anything. I don't have to go to a coach. I don't have to go to a therapist. I can come to you. 
and I'm coming to you now. And I don't want you to feel uncomfortable because this is something that it's within me. But I need to share it with you. Is it okay? And then you go ahead and you lay it out. Wow. I think that is gold. Thank you so much for sharing that tip. I think that would work really, really well because what you've just done is kind of set a mood first and it's opening with something positive, something optimistic, I feel. Mm -hmm. And then it sets that foundation that can carry something a little bit heavier, perhaps. Definitely. Because the thing is, we're, we edify our partner in letting them know, you are my support system. I mean, mm. I'm a whole person, but sometimes we all get unresourceful. We all get weak. This is natural. I'm not, one, I'm not a happy person every day. And when that day happens where I'm feeling a little bit of weak, I need to tell my partner, because you are my support system, because you are an additional source of strength and inspiration for me, mm -hmm. because you know that I can come to you with anything. I feel I can come to you with anything. I can share things with you that I may not even be able to share with my brother or my sister. Mm. Are you ready for me to share? Is it okay? You're asking permission. Is it okay? Then you, you're going to either have a husband or a wife to say, okay, yes, I'm ready for it. Or possibly, can we talk about this at a later time? Yeah. But I want you to go to them before you actually seek me as a coach, seek a therapist. I want you to confide in your partner. Yeah. Because that's your partner. This is your partner through life. Through the cold, wet, remember, for better or worse, <laughs> richer or for poor. <laughs> You know, we're in a relationship, we're yeah. in this together. So, you know, I got something heavy. It's a heavy, it's a heavy emotion. Yeah. So I love, I love how you said you ask for permission because it also stops you from just dumping on them and also evaluating where they are and respecting where they are and what their needs are in that moment. Mm -hmm. And that will bring us to the next point, which is let's say we are in, or they are in a position where the partner cannot help them or have the time or not in a position to hear them out. Let's say, how do you then use yourself as a resource and perhaps bring balance to yourself when your needs or wants are not being met in the moment. Back to that accountability model. Um, I personally uh, asked for the ability to accept the things that I cannot change. Mm -hmm. I asked for the courage to change the things I can and the, the peace that I can accept it. And if my partner, being who they are, can't accept it or is not ready to hear that, then I go to my support system. Mm. But first I ask my partner, now if now is not the good time because they just came in from work and they had a hard <laughs> day, honey, can we talk about it? Later this week, give a specific time, Okay. give an exact date, uh, you know, during this dinner, uh, during after Netflix or, mm. you know, before uh, dinner or you sit a specific time and you ask them, is it OK that we talk about something that has been troubling me at this time? Now, if they are honest and say, no, I don't want to hear it. Then I go to my support system. What is my support system? My support system is my family, ideally. My support system is my friends. 
My support system is could be a spiritual guru. Uh, could be a support group. So these are family, friends, spiritual support group, uh, external support group. Then after that point, maybe I need to consider doing a consultation with the coach. There you go. Makes so much sense. So let's say you are now in a situation where you've got the support that you needed, but you are now in a relationship, let's say perhaps 10 years down the line, you realize, you know what? they're not the same person anymore or or the relationship has evolved i have evolved she has evolved how do you come into acceptance with something or someone that's very hard for you to accept now this is me personally uh since i've been married 11 years uh we do each year no matter how good great how much we are manifesting or how much we have yet to manifest. We go to, we choose a different coach, a marriage therapist. And we've done this every year, no matter what it's like, you actually look forward to it. I love that. Because what it is, is like this. You got a car, you're servicing your car. How much every six months, every 12 months you service your car. How many times are you actually servicing your relationship? where you're going to a third party, whether it's a coach, therapist, or a spiritual guru, or a person that you both feel can give you an impartial view, but assist you. We go to a marriage therapist and we say, okay, this is where we are now. Where do we want to go? Wow. Don't settle for just the relationship put goals on the relationship where where are we going in the future together first i tell her what i want then she tells what she wants how can we work together to reach it together but you got to do that monthly yearly maintenance maintain the relationship don't mm-hmm. just expect it to be gravy and roses you gotta, you're, go, you're servicing your car, but you're not investing at least once a year to say, honey, let's do a tune up. Let's see a third party and let's just vent. The third party may say, hey, you guys are great. You seem to be in co- coexistence. The family's great. What more would you like to add? How can you take that relationship to another level? I love that. I think that's so well said. But now I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. How do you know that the relationship has come to an end and it it's it the deadlines been reached? And how do you know whether you should continue with the relationship or it's best to separate? What are some signs? Uh, The first signs are usually nonverbal. Uh, and being a neuro-linguistic programmer, I'm mm. calibrating. I'm no longer, before you would look at my eyes, and I, I would see the future in your eyes. Yeah. But you no longer look in my eyes. Yeah. I'm li- listening to your tonality so that before that sound that sounded like Whitney Houston now sounds like a scream. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I'm. I, you know. I'm, let's be honest. You know, before your voice was a melody to me. Now I feel like it's screeching. Yeah. Uh, before, I felt like you were engaged with me. You were literally engaged. When I'm looking in your eyes, you're looking in my eyes. I could literally put my hand on the table, and you would put your hand on the table too. So there's that unison. Now, mm-hmm. if these are the little nonverbal sign, yeah, and if I'm noticing that, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to communicate. Honey, I remember when we first started, you used to hold my hand in the mall or you used to write me love letters or you used to sing me songs that you would just do for me. I'm so curious. 
Have you been a little bit busy? Because I'm noticing that you're not doing that anymore. I'm, I'm curious. I love that word, curious. That's a yeah, great... I'm, I'm wondering, you know, I know you love me mm. because, you know, we're not mind reading. I know you love me. Mm. But is the job, is there something external that's not feeding our fire? So... I just need to know. I'm asking questions. So you're not accusing. No. You are asking okay. so that they can. Reciprocate. Yeah. And say, oh my gosh, hon, I forgot that, you know, I need to work on loving you. Yeah. My love for you is an actual day. Everyday activity. The same way you go to work, you work on that relationship. And I am sorry, honey, because I may not be aware because I unconsciously have slipped into that numbness of, okay, everything's going to be fine. No, it's not. Relationships are work. Yeah. And if no one will ever tell you that, I'm telling you November the 3rd, 2022, <laughs> the same, you got to put in work for relationships because you want them to be the best possible. But for that to be communication, mm -hmm. feedback, Asking questions, putting goals for the yourself and mm -hmm. for the relationship. First, you have your own personal goals. Yeah. Then you have your other goals. Now, if I'm noticing non-verbally, I'm not getting this attention and I've brought it to your attention several times at several different points. And th there seems to be a pattern. So now the patterns are no longer weeks. Now the pattern is months. Mm. Honey, I've brought this to your attention several times. And you've told me everything is fine. But for me, it's not fine because I'm not feeling the love that initially started. Mm. What can we do? Teamwork. Yeah, because we're in this together. Not, yeah. not what can you do. Yeah. What can we do yeah. to put more fuel in this? Okay? Because you may just be using unleading. You may need to use a higher octane of fuel. So what can we do? Can we do a workshop together? Can we do a tantra workshop? Can we do an emotional intelligence workshop? Can we go somewhere where we both leave the laptops and just focus on each other? And I'd also like to know from you, honey, what can I do to make you understand how much I love you? What can I do? You literally put it on a piece of paper. Tell me, what do I need to do to make you complete? Most guys, you know, oh, I'm okay. <laughs> you, know, you know, but then when you say, when you, oh, I'm okay. Don't take the, I'm okay. Peel that layer. Yeah. Take that scalpel and cut, <laughs> cut. Find out, no, okay, okay is not enough for me, honey. I need to know what's going to make you love me more. Yeah. If you ask somebody, what does it take for you to love me more? You may, a person go, good Lord, I never thought about that. I just, yeah. I just thought, but I need to, I want you to love me more. And if it's not possible within yourself, let's go out and let's look for some solutions or possible answers of how we can love each other more. Tantra workshops, meditation workshops, doing a, uh, starting an activity together to bring that closeness together. Yeah, I'm doing everything in my possible power to ask questions, to seek support, to do implement new activities together before I ever consider. Because I, you know, I'm not trying to end the relationship. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put in different implements, objects, activities to join and to make us better. Yeah. But it takes work. Let's get back to the work. Yeah. First is the communication. And then if I'm not getting the communication, then we need to do some more activities. If I'm not doing the activities, then we need to see someone. Because it's a pattern now. Now it's months, it's weeks. Before it turns into years, 
that's when you need to bring in that third party where you both respect and you feel you can get an impartial decision. And then before we go see this person, I want you to understand I'm doing this because I want us to get grow stronger. Mm. I'm not doing this because I think the relationship's going to end. I'm doing this because I want to take the relationship to another level. So the intention before you even start the whole process, that's very, very important. And I love how you shared so much about talking about your needs, your wants, setting boundaries, asking difficult questions and taking accountability, bringing balance within yourself. I love how you shared so much inside Gregory and I'd really really like to thank you for doing that so before before we end the show any last words any last tips for our listeners you are you I am me you and I are different but we have made a conscious choice to join in relation to create a higher This hire could be love. This hire could be maybe manifesting another child into the universe. This manifest could be to support each other because we feel like I'm ready to invite someone. Mm -hmm. But before you do that, I really want to ask you, are you ready to do the work to maintain this relationship forever. Wow. That's powerful. Thank you so much, Gregory. And thank you so much to all the listeners for tuning in each time to listen, to learn, to grow. So until next time with another topic, with another speaker, take care and live life. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, we'd love to have you tune in again next week as we discuss more engaging topics on relationships, health, career, self-care, and spirituality. If you'd like to help support this podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave us a rating and review. We'd be extremely grateful. To catch all the latest from us, you can also follow us on Instagram at Illuminations World or visit the Illuminations World YouTube channel for more inspiring content. See you again next week and until then, live light.